Please welcome General Counsel for WSWA, Jake Hageman. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here for our 11 o'clock live stage session. Uh, in just a moment, you're gonna hear from Mike Boswell, Vice President of, of uh, Digital Commerce at Breakthrough. We're gonna be talking about a customer first model in the digital world. So what does that mean? It talks about flexible processes, enhanced technology solutions that create a customer first model that looks forward in this emerging area. So with no further ado, let me turn it to Mike Boswell. Thanks, Jake. All right. Thanks a lot, Jake. Appreciate the, uh, the kind introduction. Um, let's see here. All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming. It's really great to see so many new and familiar faces here at WSWA's Access Live. Uh, my, as Jake said, I'm Mike Boswell. I'm the Vice President of Digital and E-Commerce at Breakthrough Beverage Group. I've been here about six years. I, uh, I'm responsible for B2B e-commerce, or B2C e-commerce uh, team, and our digital marketing teams, as well as our long-range digital strategy. Prior to this role, I was the head of corporate strategy, uh, and prior to Breakthrough, I was a consultant, and a long time ago, I was a nuclear engineer on aircraft carriers serving uh, in reactor plants. And I can happily say that I get a lot more sun now than I did then uh, in, in this industry. It's a lot more fun and a lot more drinking. No, uh, no alcohol on, uh, on ships. Uh, today I wanted to build a little bit on last year's talk. If you can believe it, we were together just nine months ago and I wanted, uh, where I talked about digital transformation. And I want to make it more practical today for how distributors and retailers and suppliers can be more customer or consumer first in their models using technology and data. Uh, just in the last nine months, there's been a lot of change that I'll talk about, and we all have to keep pace with the, uh, the frantic pace of digital in our industry. So first, what I'd like to do is do a raise of hands question. So raise your hand. How many of you have been targeted specifically by a B2C company based on your online behavior? Maybe you got an ad on Instagram, or a specific text message, email with your name on it, other personal touch point, everybody, right? Yeah. B2C companies are targeting you based on the information they know about you. And they're giving you personalized information and personalized touch points and personalized marketing to who they are and who you are. So if it can be personalized for B2C, why can't we do the same thing for B2B? Well, the answer is we can and we should and we must. We must be more personalized to our customers in this environment because that's what they expect from their brands at home. So before we get into solutions, I want to set the stage of where we are and where the omnichannel environment is in beverage alcohol. Last year, I talked about how about 4 to 5% of the off-premise is sold online. And we're much the same as we were nine months ago, but B2C e-commerce is still growing significantly faster than the total industry. It's growing at about 8%. We all know that that's a lot faster than the industry was in 2023, which was a tough year for all of us. On the B2B side, however, B2B e-commerce is approaching 20% of total touch points between distributors and retailers, and will likely approach 33% of total business within just a few years. So 33% of every dollar that goes through the distribution tier will come from B2B e-commerce, in just a couple of years. Given the increasing diversity of those customer touch points and selling methods, it's more important than ever to have a customer first, data driven approach to sales. For instance, if an account sells online and they're on Drizzly or Instacart or things like that, should that change the way you call on them? Uh, if they buy from a B2B platform, does that change how your sales reps might interact with them? Um, I just want to give one example. In, uh, in Chicago, I was out in the market last week, and I met with a, a customer called Burnham Liquors in Chicago. And they sold, um, you know, it's a standard kind of, you know, got a couple rows of wine. Uh, back, back behind the, the area, there's a, a bunch of spirits. And this looks like your typical off-premise account. But after I met with the, the owner, he said, come down with me, I want to show you something. And I went into his basement, and instead of just the couple of products that he had, he had $2.2 million of inventory and boxes upon boxes all over his basement that were labeled for Drizzly or Instacart or Reserve Bar or all these other places that they sold his business. 
and he, and he says, Mike, I'm going to lose somewhere between 10 and 20% of my business when Drizzly closes at the end of March. So, and that's the biggest news since I started uh, planning this that happened, is Drizzly announced just a few weeks ago that it's going to close its doors at the end of March. And a lot of us saw that coming. Uber bought it. It's a different brand. They want to invest in their brand. But there are retailers out there that, that really rely on Drizzly to con connect with consumers in their state with significant amount of their total business going through Drizzly. And what that retailer and other retailers have told me is that Uber isn't doing the best job at transitioning those accounts to Uber Eats. And oh, by the way, Uber Eats charges one and a half times the commission that Drizzly did. And they don't refund some of the taxes that Drizzly did. So they don't have the same customer first approach that Drizzly had. Now Drizzly wasn't perfect. It pitted retailers against each other in terms of price. So you would look on Drizzly and you would see all the different retailers and you would pick the one that had the lowest price even if it was 10 miles away from you. The new solutions, uh, white label solutions, Uber Eats don't do that. You order from a specific retailer. But that marketplace is really going away and there's not enough to uh, currently to make up that business. So we, as in our industry, have to work with those retailers to talk to them about what are their possible answers to, for that business they're gonna lose when Drizzly closes. Do they have a white label website? Do they use another one of the marketplaces like Reserve Bar? There's another one here called Passion Spirits that's up and coming. How do we make sure that we're talking to our retailers in a compliant way and helping them through that transition? It's a very important problem and being customer focused and understanding that issue and understanding who those customers are that are using these platforms is critical uh, in a customer centric world. So what does customer centricity mean in our industry? Oh, that's the, um, the wrong slides up, but that's okay. Um, it means, simply it means making the customer experience the primary focus of your business. At Breakthrough, ever since our new CEO, Tom Binet, came on board, he re-emphasized the fact that we are a customer-first distributor, that all of the, the corporate staff is here to help the markets, and the markets are there to help our customers be successful. And that's how we live and breathe every day. And for distributors in our industry, that simple adage can seem far-fetched. Aren't suppliers, all the suppliers here, our most important stakeholder, and they are an incredibly important stakeholder, but customer relationships and through them understanding the end consumer is our core function. And if we do that well, we're gonna sell more cases of our suppliers' products and our suppliers will be happy. So it goes all the way back in the circle. If you're customer-centric, your suppliers will benefit as well. Okay, perfect. So now that we've defined what customer centricity is, I want to talk about a few ways that we can actually act upon that and, uh, and become more customer centric as distributors. Number one, you need to understand who your customers are. And to do that, you have to have a unified view of who your customers are. Who they are, how they purchase, what they do, where they're located, who buys from you, do they use B2B e-commerce, do they open your emails? All of that information has to be in one place. And once you have that foundation of data, then you should empower your sales teams with the right technology to make them more consultative and less transactional. Third, and finally, take that data that you got from step one, integrate it with the technology in step two, and deliver those digital insights to all of our sales channels, our sales consultants, our customer care teams, and your B2B e-commerce platform or B2B e-commerce partners. So first, creating a unified customer view. How do we improve that ability to understand who our customers are? It's really important to have a unified customer view because it allows us to see all of our customers' interactions across all channels, enabling personalized and efficient service. What that could mean is you know who that customer is, what their ship to date is, uh, when their delivery or ship to address, when their delivery date is, who's their buyer, all of that's probably in your ERP system. And then you might know that it's a, um, you know, Italian restaurant. That's from TD Links. 
And you might know that it has a specific, it's merchandisable. Well, that might be in your own proprietary platform. Or that it has a cold box. Or that it has certain other attributes. And, or that it over-indexes with certain, you know, women over 40 that comes from Spectra. All of these different data sources for one customer. And in order to find all of it, it would take hours of analysis to say, who is this customer? Do they use Breakthrough now? Are they uh, interested in Scotch? And I could do all that, but it would take hours. If you have the right platform, whether it's a data lake or a customer data platform, to pull all of that together, you can implement a single view of that customer data. And we've been able to do that, to integrate all that data from various touch points and give us a comprehensive view of who our customers are and their journey with Breakthrough. Customer-first businesses with a unified view of customer data, according to one uh, research report, see almost 10 times greater annual growth in customer satisfaction and almost three times greater year-over-year -year revenue growth on average. So if you, are, if you understand who your customers are, they will buy more from you. Now that you understand who the customer is, you have to start giving the, the tools to your sales teams so they can be successful. Providing reps with the technology needed to simplify their jobs and spend more time in front of buyers versus doing administration is a key unlock in an industry that can spend a lot of time doing surveys and collecting data versus interfacing with accounts. A more recent example, when we introduced ability for reps to directly suggest specific products and solutions via B2B e-commerce, including pricing, it made a leap forward to connect the in-person and digital sales process. That makes the digital experience feel more personal to the account and blurs the line between the physical and the digital. So they feel that they're supported by their rep and when they go to their B2B e-commerce site. And we must continue to emphasize as we go down this technology journey, that, our, that these tools augment our team skills, but they're not a replacement for that. The personal relationship between sales rep or inside sales rep and the account is still paramount in all of this and will continue to be. Now once you have a single view of the customer and you give the right tools to your sales reps, um, sales consultants can understand online behavior to inform productive sales pitches. They can see the vast amounts of information that you've collected about this customer before they walk in the door. And that's not only critical to sales consultants, but sales managers who are covering vacation routes, um, route changes, so if there's a new rep calling on that account, or, um, or onboarding new staff, if you have all that information, instead of having to go to the old rep and say, hey, who's this account, what do they do, how do they order, are they a Drizzly account, all of that information is up front, and it makes it seamless for any of those changes that are all too often happening in our industry. For instance, if you know that an account sells via shipment partners, like I talked about Burnham Liquors, you should ask if they have a back room. You should ask how much inventory they can handle. And that would have a better understanding of that customer and unlock more opportunities to provide solutions. So if you know if they have a bunch of space for inventory, why don't you sell them the 25 case deal instead of the 10 case deal? It's better for them and their margins and better for you and your suppliers. Having that information up front and knowing how they interface with their consumers is critical to having a good relationship with that account and optimizing your business. At and the final step to success in integrating those digital insights isn't just giving them, it's training your teams. You have to train your sales consultants, your management, all of the support staff on these tools and how to optimize them. At Breakthrough, we use e-commerce 101, e-commerce 201, digital sales training for every rep from the moment they walk in the door at Breakthrough so they understand the tools at their disposal so they can be successful with the data that we have to offer and use them in benefit of their customers. So uh, to build a little bit on uh, the conversation this morning for those, and that was a great conversation about AI this morning. I want to, uh, a question I get really frequently is, what's next? Now that we have these tools, what's coming down the pike uh, in terms of technology, and how is that going to make us more customer centric? And the big topic everyone wants to talk about, and Linda talked about this morning, is AI. And AI and machine learning will absolutely have a huge impact 
on personal customer experiences. AI, again, is not going to replace our teams, but it will help them, just like other technologies, do their jobs better with better customer service. In the near future, we might see AI tools predicting customer needs even before they articulate them, so, taking that vast amount of customer data, crunching it and saying, this customer is most likely to buy X, Y, or Z product, and that transforms how we engage with them and makes us our sales pitches much more relevant. Those AI models will crunch all that data versus your portfolio and provide recommendation one, 90%, recommendation two, 80% likelihood, recommendation three, 70% likelihood of sale, including the right pricing and the right POS to drive success on shelf. That's the key unlock that I think AI is gonna bring. It's not only selling into the account, but having the information to give the solutions to that account to sell it through to the consumer. And it's already happening to some degree with advanced predictive algorithms predicting when stores need to restock or when to purchase based on their online sales history. And I know that we have that and our, and our biggest competitors have that technology as well. So a fun fact about AI. The first outline I built for this speech was supported by ChatGPT. All in all, the prep for this speech versus the one I gave nine months ago was about 30% faster than it was before. It helped me collect my thoughts. It helped me be more successful. It helped me think about what the right topics were. But the words that you're hearing today are definitely mine and not ChatGPT's. And that's the way we should think about AI in sales as well. It's a tool. It's a tool to help us, but it does not relieve us of the responsibility to having personal understanding of our customers and their needs. So we can't lean too hard on technology no matter how cool and flashy it is, we're still a people business and it will remain that way uh, into the future. So what I talked about today was how do we become more customer centric? Understanding who your customer is and have a unified view of what they are. Give your sales, tool, uh, sales teams the right tools and technology for them to be successful and then integrate those insights to all of your sales uh, teams for them to be able to be more customer first with that information. And then finally, be prepared for the future. AI is coming, AI is here, and it will help us be more successful in, uh, in 2025 and beyond. So thank you very much, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Hi, Mike. Looking hey, Bricard. Good. Hey. Uh, so you talked a lot about like big strategic ideas, and I wanted to talk a little sure. bit about like tactical stuff. And the fact that in order to bring all these disparate data sources together, you need uh, probably a surge in investment behind IT. Um, is that the case? And are there certain ways that you can like place those additional resources to make sure that they are serving the frontline you know, sales reps better? Like, yes. would it be better to have more IT people in this isolated IT team or have them, you know, on the front line kind of integrated into sales organizations? What, what would you say is the right way to, like, solve that data problem to make sure that you can access all that information? For sure. I think, so that's two parts question. One is, how do you do it? And the other is, how do you structure your teams to be successful? So I'll start with the first part. How do you do it? And there's different, you don't have to have massive investment. All that data is there. You have it in your ERP system. You have it from purchased third-party data, like, like Nielsen. You've got it from you know, interactions that you might, anything that you might collect from surveys. If you have a B2B commerce tool or a partner, that data is there too. What you're doing is you're just pulling it together. So there are data lake solutions, like um, Snowflake. Lower costs, they'll help you what you're really doing is aggregating disparate sorts of data, assigning it to the same account, and then surfacing it. There's customer data platforms that do it as well, uh, so you don't have to invest in a separate technology. All your technology and all the data is there. It's putting it together and surfacing it with your you know, sales tool, or if you have a CRM system or something like that, or your B2B commerce tool. It's just taking all the data, putting it in one place, and surfacing it. So yes, it's an investment, but it doesn't have to be a massive one. And to the question about how we should be structured, I think it's a really good one. The more we can integrate 
the digital commercial side, my role, and the technical side, IT, into one cohesive unit and make them more customer facing so they understand, they go on ride alongs and ride whiz and understand who the customers are, which my counterpart, the IT team, does. I think it's really critical to your point. They have to understand what the actual issues that our customers are facing to think about and inform the technology solutions that we bring to our company. Great question. Anybody else? Good afternoon. So what is a breakthrough going to do differently than everyone else to separate yourself from the pack and reach those customers, those consumers, because obviously there is a, a logistical meltdown happening around the country right now and delivering products cost effectively um, and reaching consumers with all the noise that's out in social media that's dying a slow death. Yep, so our perspective is that we want to be the easiest distributor to work with. That is our North Star, is how do we be easier for customers to work with us? And it's easier if I know what they want before I walk in the door. It's easier if I let them order however they want to, back of a napkin, e-commerce, third party, whatever. And if we take this data that, and this understanding and that customer-centric model, we're gonna be able to put the right bottle in the right place at the right time, and it will also inform our uh, service model, when should it be delivered? How often should it be delivered? These technologies and this data crunching and AI can tell us how to reroute our trucks to be the right place at the right time with the right level of service and the right route to market to make sure that every account has the right level of support for them to be successful. And if we do that right, we're gonna sell a hell of a lot more products than we did before. Great presentation. I have a very simple question. Sure. Now, when we talk about AI, mostly in alcohol bio industry, it's uh, shelf analytics. What's your take on that when you talk about customer data platform? So shelf analytics? Um, I think it's so much beyond, it's way beyond shelf analytics. I think shelf analytics is great. It's like, okay, what, where should the bottles go and how should it be optimized? And we have a whole fantastic category development team that works on that, and uh, Ezra Henson, if you, if you ever have a chance, brilliant team that does a great job with shelf analytics. I think AI can touch everything. It touched writing emails, and writing presentations, and writing sales presentations, and pulling together a holistic sales presentation with POS, and sell sheets, and pricing, and everything. And I think that is where we're headed. It's, it's gonna be, um, Every process will be supported by AI at some point. Now, note the supported. It's not gonna be done by AI. People will always be involved. I'm not a person that thinks that jobs are gonna be lost as a result of AI. I think people are just gonna be so much more effective in their sales pitches because they're gonna have more information and that information will be faster. AI speeds things up. So the analytics we're gonna be able to do, the information we're gonna be able to uh, create is gonna be so much faster. A lot of the things that I talked about today, we could do now. It would just take 10 hours. In the future, it's gonna take minutes. And that's where AI is gonna be really successful. Thank you for your presentation. Um, what guidance would you have for small to medium-sized brands to integrate themselves into this conversation? Um, best practices for their own consumer insights that they can then feed back and have an intelligent conversation with their distributor? So I, I think that for small and medium-sized suppliers, are you selling through third-party e-commerce sites? Lots of data, try to get that data. Um, using the data that you get from your distributor and your distributor sales portal, uh, crunching that information, um, and then coordinating with your distributor as you go through the process, your, you know, your portfolio managers, to say, what are some of the solutions that you have for me, and how can you help me grow my business? Uh, at, um, so I think that there are ways for you to get involved in a low-cost way through those third parties that, that might sell through um, 
you know, uh, B2C or your distributor or, um, you know, if you do D2C, if you're small enough to self-distribute, gather that data and use it to inform your distribution partners about, hey, I've got something here that's growing. You should give me more support because what we need to know the small suppliers that are going to be most successful is the proof that there's pull through, that there are consumers interested in your brand and more of them, once they get access to your brand, will buy it. The more you can get that information in front of distributors, the more they're going to pay attention and give you more support. All right. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciate everyone being here. Happy to take more questions offline if, uh, if you didn't want to uh, ask it. <laughs>